Hello and uh, welcome, glad you could join me, glad you've uh, chosen to listen to this tutorial which is about uh, amount of substance and mole calculations and uh, specifically about mass calculations and uh, starting off with relative atomic mass, we'll then go on to relative formula mass, molar mass, Avogadro constant and calculations involving chemical reactions. Uh, but to start with uh, relative atomic mass. So. Uh, our overall objective when doing these uh, mass calculations is to interconvert mass and amount or number of atoms so to do that we need the mass of each atom and so that's what we're first of all trying to do work out the mass of each atom and uh, that's where relative atomic mass comes in so uh, we're learning to identify the slight discrepancy between mass number and actual mass uh, explain this in terms of binding energy then identify the presence of isotopes as having a far more significant effect upon mass. Calculate the average mass across all isotopes, by which time we will have defined relative atomic mass, and that's a working mass that we can use to then interconvert mass and amount. Okay, so first thing here, identify the slight discrepancy between mass number and actual mass. So here I've got a, a lithium atom and it's got uh, three protons in there and four neutrons so in total it's got uh, seven protons and neutrons and that there we would call the uh, mass number whereas in the case of a hydrogen it's just got one proton uh, and so its mass number is one because it's just got one proton in there now if we were to compare the actual mass of a lithium with a uh, hydrogen we may well expect that there is a factor of times seven uh, between the two uh, because one's got seven more protons and neutrons than the other but actually this is not quite true and uh, the reason why it's not quite true is because uh, atoms uh, sorry protons and neutrons in the nucleus have slightly different masses depending which nucleus they are in and if there are more uh, protons and neutrons there then generally the average mass uh, per proton and neutron goes down slightly and that's because they're bound together and in uh, forming that binding energy they uh, lose a little bit of mass so if we look at now at uh, hydrogen and carbon and uh, we've obviously got a uh, mass number of 1 for hydrogen and 12 for carbon, 6 protons and 6 neutrons. And I suppose specifically I'm looking at the, uh, the carbon-12 atom, uh, the one which has got uh, that particular isotope with the 6 neutrons in there. Now, let's say that that value there is exactly 12. Uh, then we want to say, okay, well, what is this number then relative to that exactly 12? Because it's not exactly 1, because uh, in fact it's got uh, less binding energy than, than that one. So we would expect the hydrogen to be slightly heavier, actually, relatively, and that's true. Its mass is 1.008, so just a, a little bit heavier per proton or neutron. Now, taking this uh, carbon-12 atom is uh, what, uh, what we do. We use that as a reference and we say that in the carbon-12 atom we're going to uh, define the uh, relative atomic mass as being uh, exactly 12, the same as the mass number. But that only applies for carbon-12. For the other, we get this uh, small discrepancy. So uh, if we have a look at this table here, we've got these atoms, so these particular isotopes. Uh, there's their mass number, which of course is just the same as the number of protons and neutrons in there, and mass relative to carbon-12. Well, we just said that the uh, hydrogen is uh, 1.008, slightly heavier than you'd expect, as it were. The carbon we put as exactly 12, that's our reference. There's nothing special about carbon, it's just been chosen as a, uh, as a, as a standard. And then the uh, iron, well that's not exactly 56, that's got a bit more binding energy because there's more protons and neutrons in there, and so its mass is slightly lower, and that's uh, 
55.935. Okay, to sum so to summarize, the mass of protons and neutrons is not the same in all atoms. Uh, so that's why we need to uh, make uh, have a reference, do numbers, do our amounts relative to carbon, uh, and the actual mass of atoms therefore varies slightly, but only slightly from the mass number. Look, these are 0.9 and a bit, and just over one. It only causes a very small difference between mass number and relative mass. So let's have a look at this statement. Relative atomic mass of copper is 63.55. Well, ooh, ooh, ooh. A slight discrepancy, 0.55 is a big discrepancy. So this cannot be explained by this slight variability in the mass of the protons and neutrons. And something else is going on. So we're going on now to identify the presence of isotopes as having a far more significant effect upon mass and then calculate the average mass across all isotopes. So uh, we just said the relative atomic mass of copper is 63.55. That's true. Well, if we were to take uh, some copper and put it in a mass spectrometer, uh, then the mass spectrometer would give a readout which would give the mass of uh, the two isotopes, which is the 63 and the 65 copper, and then their relative abundances. Now, you can see that the 63 copper uh, weighs slightly less than 63, 62.93, because of that slight binding energy. And then similarly for the uh, 65 isotope, that's slightly slightly below uh, 64.93. And if we look at the relative abundances, 69% uh, of copper is this 63 isotope and 31% is this 65. So we can do a calculation to work out the, uh, the, 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 mean, uh, the mean mass here. And that would be taking the 62.93, multiplying by the 69% and then adding the 64.93 and adding on uh, multiplying by the 31%, which then gives, lo and behold, our 63.55. So we have worked out a weighted average across all isotopes. OK, so uh, just sort of coming to the end of this now, really, uh, the overall objective with math mass calculations is to integrate convert mass and amount therefore we need the mass of each atom therefore we're going to move away from uh, that's a mass number there sort of a don't really want that mass number anymore now we want the relative atomic mass uh, and so instead of having these whole numbers for mass numbers we will now have these non whole numbers for relative atomic mass uh, numbers uh, if we were to look for a definition of uh, relative atomic mass, well, it's relative to carbon-12, and it's the atomic mass uh, averaged across all isotopes. And if we have a look at a few examples here, here we've got the lithium atom, its relative atomic mass 6.939, so uh, there was a small amount of uh, lithium-6 isotope in there, which brings it down slightly. For carbon, uh, slightly above 12 because uh, you get about 1% of uh, uh, carbon-13, uh, natural, natural abundance. And then for iron, then uh, there are some other isotopes which are slightly less heavier than the common 56 one. And hence we see that uh, relative atomic mass slightly lower than it was for the uh, 56 atom. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. Next, we'll go on to relative formula mass.